Hey there, I'm Eli, and one day, a super hot scientist abducted me. But before I tell you the rest of my story, please remember to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell icon so you can stay updated about new uploads and to show your support for me. I didn't know taking that IQ test was going to lead to this. But when I got my results and that piece of paper said that I had an IQ score of 162, I started getting weird calls from private numbers. At first, I thought it was just spam. The calls would always start with some odd elevator music, and then what sounded like a recorded message would play. I did tend to frequent internet forums, and so I thought it was just from signing up to too many sites. Or maybe I clicked on some weird links, I supposed. But then, one day, when I took the time to actually listen to the whole thing, I found out that it was an invitation. An invitation to join the country's premier society for gifted people. Or so they claimed to be. Not gonna lie, I was pretty stoked. The whole thing made me feel special. Important, even. And speaking on behalf of total geeks like myself, who wouldn't want to be part of an elite, exclusive secret club? So, that's how it all began. When I finally took that mysterious phone call, I followed the instructions given to me, and I answered the questionnaire as accurately as I could. At the end of the call, they gave me a temporary member number. Apparently, my application was subject to a review first. The robotic voice on the other end of the line said that I would be contacted within the next week if my application was successful. And, once accepted, they would need to invite me to one of their offices to formally induct me into the club. Then, the line clicked, and the call ended. That very same night, I received an email from them. I didn't really expect everything to happen that fast. But the reasoning they gave me were all logical. They told me that no member had ever had any score above 150. And so, everyone was pretty excited. They arranged for me to be inducted, toot sweet. The following morning, a shiny Cadillac pulled up to our house. My mom and dad were so impressed, they didn't mind letting me go off with a bunch of strangers. But not before my dad snapped a selfie of himself in front of the fancy car. As soon as I got to their offices, a stern-looking lady greeted me at the front door. You must be Eli she said as she shook my hand. I'm Minerva. I'll be handling your induction to the club today. We're very excited to have you. Th thanks I said, still a bit apprehensive. N nice to meet you. This all seems a little much, doesn't it? I gestured to the buffet of brunch items and streamers that welcomed me at the lobby when Minerva showed me in. Oh, not at all, said Minerva. We're always happy to welcome new members, and especially such a high IQ subject- I, I mean, member like yourself. I swear, she almost said subject, and that gave me chills. Nevertheless, I shook her unintended comment off and thought maybe she was just as nervous as I was. Minerva made me sign a bunch of paperwork. They were all requirements for getting into the club, she told me. They asked a lot about my family, my background, things I tended to like doing, even my medical history. There was a bundle of stapled paper that seemed like a contract, but I never got to read it in full as Minerva rushed me into signing it, saying that I was on a tight schedule for the morning. She said I was to meet with the board of the club, and that my tour of the facilities was already running late as it was. We'll email you the entire contract, she said. Don't worry about it. It's mostly non-disclosure stuff and that sort of thing, for your own safety, and the other members as well. She winked at me, and I believed her. Just as I finished dotting the I on my signature, the sliding glass doors that led further into the building hissed open. The sound reminded me of the doors you always see in sci-fi movies. Out stepped a group of men in lab coats. The most prominent of them extended his hand to me. He didn't smile. He didn't introduce himself. He just took my hand with a vice-like grip and said, Glad to have you here, Eli. And then, he nodded at Minerva. His paperwork is in order? Yes, just finished signing everything, Minerva replied. Then, shall we proceed? Asked the tall, serious man whose name I still didn't know. Immediately, four of the men in lab coats seized me. There was also two girls who looked like they were part of security that came up from behind me. I didn't even notice them there. Well, hey! I exclaimed as they half-dragged, half-guided me further into the building. W what's happening? What are you- what are you doing? Get off! The tall man looked back over his shoulders, but didn't stop walking. Just do as you're told, boy, 
It'll be much easier for you. It wasn't as if I had much of a choice, really. I was a scrawny kid. I couldn't fight off even one of them if I tried. Soon enough, they pushed me into an elevator. And when I saw that there were only three floors in the building, I contemplated the odds of me surviving that fall. I just need to land right, I thought. But no sooner had I finished my thought that the elevator began to descend. Nowhere in the elevator's console did it say that there was even a basement. But it seemed like the ride went on forever. When it finally stopped, the elevator doors opened up to a vast, underground room that looked like it was a massive laboratory. It was so cavernous, I couldn't begin to tell you where it ended. Rooms upon endless rooms, and corridors upon corridors radiated outwards from the central point, which was the lobby right outside of the elevator. And there, seated on a pristine, white leather couch, was the hottest scientist I'd ever seen. She stood the moment she saw me being brought in. And then, she kissed me on the cheek. I pushed her back. She was awfully familiar for a kidnapper, I thought. What, what are you doing? I managed to ask. Why, welcoming our most valuable subject, of course, she replied. Take him to Bay 3. Enclosure 626 is vacant, she said to the guards. And to me, she winked and said, We've prepared very comfortable accommodations for you. From now on, you're no longer Eli. Here, you're simply 24601. Memorize that. You're gonna need to. At that, she flipped her hair and walked away. What did I get myself into? Why was this happening to me? Why is this even allowed to happen? I should have just joined Mensa instead of some random club I've never even heard of. Why didn't I just join Mensa? I was being carried away towards a sterile-looking corridor and having these thoughts that something caught my eye. The whole corridor was a row of what they referred to as enclosures, and in each one, there were people. One had a really muscled-up guy. Another, a small, lost-looking girl. And then, I saw him. Before the guards could stop me, I ran towards one of the enclosures and began pounding into the bulletproof glass. Hey! I yelled at the guy inside. Hey! I know you! What's happening? What are they gonna do to us? Hey, I, I know you! Aren't you that Milton guy? But whether it was him or not, I didn't even find out. One of the guards took out a taser, and in a second, I'd lost consciousness. I woke up in a bright, white padded room, exactly like the ones you see in asylums. And exactly like every other enclosure I saw in that corridor. There was nothing in there except for a bed that was built into the wall. An aluminum toilet and a sink. There was one entrance and exit, the one that led to the corridor, and that wall was made entirely of bulletproof glass. Only a small slit in the door allowed me to contact outside air. I presumed that's what they used for dispensing food. I didn't know what to do. How would I ever get out? What use would an IQ of 162 be in a place like this? So, I went along with anything they wanted me to do. I thought, if I was obedient, Maybe they'd be more lenient on me. And perhaps that could be my opening. They might even let me go. From what I could gather, the facility was owned by some bigwig who was super into human experimentation. And on the down low, he wanted to create the perfect human being. So, he began to gather anyone who had impressive qualities. There were people who had insane metabolism, perfect looks, impregnable immune systems, and then there were people like me. People who had high IQ. It was simple enough to clone any of us. They'd already done that stuff to sheep. But to be able to take all the qualities from all different kinds of people, they were having a tough time with that. When even gene editing and CRISPR didn't work, the hot scientist came to me one day. She looked a bit sad. I'm sorry we have to do this, but, but this is our last option. The boss is cracking down on our deadlines. It's either you, or, or us. I did not like the sound of that, one bit. I tried to fight her. I tried to fight off the guards. But no amount of screaming and struggling did me any good. They dragged me into a dark corridor and pushed me into what looked like an operating room. Once inside, they strapped me into a contraption, which was like an upright hospital bed. On my head, they placed a metal cage that kept my skull in place. I tried to move my head. But once they fastened the cage, 
I couldn't move an inch. Then, the scientist took out a syringe. She tested it first, and then she began to walk towards me. I screamed and thrashed against my restraints. Help! I yelled. What are you doing? Help! Please! What are you doing? Please, stop! It only took a few seconds. As soon as she'd withdrawn the needle, I began to feel loopy. The world began to spin, and my eyes began to droop. But before I completely passed out, I saw her coming at me with a saw. She was about to cut my head open. There isn't much that I could remember clearly. Everything was a blur. I know that there was loud noises. I remember being taken off of that bed. I remember men dressed in suits, and I remember seeing that guy that I recognized from before. He was being taken away by what looked like a bunch of mafia guys. I remember the doors to every enclosure opening. Somehow, I made it out alive. The sedative they put into me eventually cleared, and I ran. I just ran. And no one stopped me.